child of God, I'm Pastor Afel Lumosheson, the host of Living by Grace. I believe in grace, the grace of God. I believe one of the greatest gifts that the Lord has given us is the gift of grace. For with the grace of God and the grace of God alone, are we able to live the new life that we have from God in Christ Jesus? The life that God gave to us in Christ is a good life. Beautiful, powerful, glorious, and so on and so forth. But it takes the grace of God for a man that has the life of God to be able to truly live that life and enjoy. And that's why I'm excited about this platform. Because through this platform, God expands, explains unto us what it means to have grace and how to appropriate grace. So I'm excited that you are listening to me. And it's not only you. Several thousand from all over the world are joining us in this family of grace. Tonight you will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, I want to ask a question and then, with the help of the Holy Spirit, use the Word of God to answer it. Our text for today's study will be taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Just a scripture, just a verse. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It reads, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace and holiness. Follow it with all men. And that is the key to seeing God. Peace and holiness. Follow it with all men. And that is the key to seeing God in the midst of men. Peace and holiness. Pursue being at peace. You pursue being at peace in all your relationship. Pursue peace. You know, the other fellow may not be at peace with you. That's not your responsibility. But your own responsibility is to make sure that you live in peace with people. Do whatever it will cost for you to be at peace with everybody you have a relationship with. Pursue peace with all men and holiness. And holiness means do whatever it will take in your power to be godly in your relationship and dealings with people. That's what it means to be holy. Be straightforward, be truthful, be sincere, be honest. Whatever situation arises in your relationship with people, let who you say you are prevail over what you are going through in your relationship. Don't compromise. Don't discount your identity. Don't abdicate your personality in Christ because of what you are going through. Nobody is valuable enough to justify why you should compromise. Nobody. Not your father, not your mother, not your pastor. There is no human being 
that is what a reason for you to abdicate who God say you are. Don't lie for anybody's sake. If you go to our churches today, you see people praying. What are they praying for? They want to see God in their lives. Programs are organized with the promise that the people that attend will see God. Praise concert, holy communion meetings, one church program or the other. Fasting, going to mountains, and so many things that people do. People like you and I, children of God. And why are we doing that? Because we want to see God. The, the extent that the children of God, like you and I, go in the hope of seeing God, you can't imagine it all. People go on very long drive fast because they want to see God in their life and in their situations. It's good. It's biblical. But in this scripture, God stated it very simply. Seeing, seeing God in your life is premised on the quality of your relationship with people. Because God is in people. So he said, pursue peace and holiness with all men. And that is what will bring the God in them out in the form that you are looking for God. God is a spirit and is in heavens. But on earth here, we see God through the people that God has created. We see God through his activities in the life and through the life of his creation. And so the God that you are looking for, this is what he's saying to you. I am in people. The people that are in your life today, they are the career of the spirit of God that is going to help you according to your prayer point. So it's telling you, pursue peace with the people in your life. Pursue holy living with the people in your life. For it is through them and in them that you will find me. That's the meaning of that scripture, brethren. Pursue peace with all men and holiness, without which no man can see God. He's not in the church as a building. He is not in the mountain as in a rock. God is in the creations around you. In your case and my case, God is in the people that is in our lives. Your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, your sibling, your in-laws, your colleagues, your neighbors, your fellow citizens, they are the careers of God. Inside them is the God that you are looking for in the form that you are looking for Him. Praise the name of the Lord. So this evening, having said this, I want to talk about the topic of my discussion this evening will be it takes God to find God. It takes God to find God. God is a spirit according to John chapter 4. So we can't see him. God existed before time and God exists above and beyond time. Everything your naked eyes can see, they are in time. 
God existed before them. And God existed above them. And God exists in time as the power that holds everything together in time. And when time and all that is born in time is over, God will still be. So God is not visible to the physical eyes. Yet we are looking for God. So when we say we are looking for God, we are not looking for a physical being. Like you are looking for somebody whose name you know. No. When we look for God, when we say we are looking for God, we are looking for the works of God. We are looking for the proof, evidences, characteristics of God. That's what the Bible refers to in Galatians chapter 5 as the fruit of the Spirit. That's what we are looking for. We are looking for love. We are looking for joy. We are looking for long suffering. We are looking for temperance. We are looking for faith. We are looking for gentleness. We are looking for goodness. These are the qualities of God that we are looking for. And where are we looking for it? We are looking for it from the people around us. The married, they are looking for love from their spouse. People in relationship, they are looking for goodness. They are looking for kindness. They are looking for long suffering from the people in their lives. So when we say we are looking for God, we are actually saying we are looking for the attributes of God from the people in our life. I want you to love me. I want you to be good to me. I want you to show me kindness. I want you to understand with me. I want you to rejoice with me. Make me happy. So the Lord is saying, whoever is looking for God, needs to have God. He takes God to find God. How does God find God? In the Old Testament, the Bible says, deep calleth unto deep. Look at that. The deep calleth unto the deep. In this case, the God that is finding God is the spirit of God in you that is yearning for the attributes of God in the people around you. Let me make it practical. Look at Luke chapter 5. The story of the fishing by Peter. With his human effort, Peter looked for a good catch, which is symbolic of success. He worked hard to succeed. Did he find success? No. Until Jesus came. It was with the help of Jesus that Peter found the promise of God concerning the work of our hands. It takes God to find God. It takes obedience to the word of God. That's God. That's godliness. See, when we obey the word of God. And as we follow the spirit of God through obedience to the scriptures, he leads us to the result of the acts of God that we are praying for. It is God that makes it successful. The Bible said the race is not for the swift, the battle is not for the strong. It is God that gives us power to make rich. So by biblical instructions, God prepares a way for us that has the Spirit of God in us through following the leading of the Spirit, which will be a leading to obey the Word of God. He leads us to the appearances of God that we are desirous of in life. That's what I mean by it takes God to find God. It took Jesus for Peter to find success. And success is one of the works of God. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says for 12 years and with so much money, she has spent herself looking for healing. 
She didn't find it. But the day she came to Jesus, through Jesus and by Jesus, she found the healing. He takes God to find God. Because nobody gets what he's looking for. What everybody gets is who he is. You can only find God where you become godly. You can only experience the fulfillment of the promises of God when you become godly. Because the promises of God are made to a spirit-filled man. Child of God, he takes God to find God. So I'm saying, in addition to and even beyond your praying ad and fasting ad and going to mountains, Hard godliness. Pursue peace with all men. Pursue holiness with all men. Your relationship with your fellow human being is an essential requirement in addition to your praying hard to find the fulfillment of God's promises. It is not enough to be prayerful. It is not enough to be prayerful and it is not enough to be hardworking. Your relationship, the way you behave, the way you treat people, are you fair to people? Are you honest with people? Are you caring for people? Are you truthful with people? The quality of your relationship with people counts. If you truly want to find God in whatever form you are looking for him. Some are looking for God in the form of marriage. He can be found. Some are looking for God in the form of a child. He can be found. And they have spent so much spiritual resources in praying, in fasting, but they've not given attention to their relationship with the people in their life. How can you be so prayerful, yet you steal, you cheat, you oppress your house herbs? No. You should be prayerful, and in addition to being prayerful, be honest, be truthful, be kind, be sensitive to the people in your life. This is the word of the Lord. I pray that it will find a place in your heart that will make you to embrace it and adjust your walk in life. For surely, it takes God to find God. It takes godliness to find the fulfillment of God's promises. You will find yours. And when I see you next Wednesday, you will already be singing new songs. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Look at our screen. You will see our information. You can get back to us with any of your questions. And we are ready to join you to pray. Until I see you next Wednesday, keep living under the atmosphere of grace. God bless you.